today I'm bringing you inside my shop. I get a lot of questions asked about how I stage, place, and sell all the thrift store finds that we're always flipping on our live videos. So come along with me and I'll show you where all my stuff goes. So if you guys watched our most recent live video, you saw Zeb and I paint this pink chippy antique dresser. And then we also did some smalls. We've got a couple of, this was just like a chicken and I painted it white and this was a finial. That's also something I found flipping. I actually found this darling bird cage just the way it is at the thrift store. Sometimes you get lucky. And then of course candlesticks are always a big seller. I already had these two here. And then I found this third one. It's not an exact match, but it makes a really cute grouping. So when you're staging things, whether you're decorating your home or decorating your retail space, it's important to have like items that look good together. So we've got a grouping here and then a little grouping there because usually people will not buy one item, but they'll buy like the whole little area. In this corner, we've got a white dry brushed basket that we just did on Saturday. This chippy white sewing machine that we actually did an entire video on this finish and then this actually was a pillow that I had at my house. I changed out my decor and it came to live here. That happens a lot. That's like one of the best things about having a retail space is I can really change things up at home a lot and I always have a place to unload some of my things I'm not using anymore. This was a thrifted shelf. I love this. It's painted in farm fresh. Anytime we find these big oversized chunky shelves we always pick them up because they're they're fast sellers. And then I've got all of Zepp's candlesticks up here that he makes, as well as a stenciled sign. In this corner we have this desk I picked up on Facebook Marketplace and painted Farm Fresh. The desk is actually already sold. My biggest problem is when things sell, I gotta make sure to get something in here quickly so that way I have somewhere to put all my small items. Sometimes that can be a little complicated, but we get it figured out. These are both thrifted items. This pretty little tureen, I don't know what you wanna call it, soup tureen and then this milk glass jar. This is actually just something I picked up at the craft store. It's like a milk can and they put flowers in it. A lot of times people can't figure out how to stage flowers together and so if you put a little grouping together they'll buy it because the hard work's already done for them. This is what I do with baskets. I like to hang them so people can kind of get the idea. That's another little shelf that we thrifted. We stenciled this live on our YouTube channel. The stencil in the back, this buffalo check plaid, we actually sell that on our website. It's one of our best sellers because it makes quick work of buffalo plaid. And then of course I'm always looking for little vases. This is milk glass, but it's so pretty and got some great lines. The Starling little white cabinet, I love. I'm always looking for music cabinets because they have a bunch of shelving in them. It's super simple and that's why I kept it white because I just wanted it nice and clean. I also stage it with the door open because with it shut, it's really not that exciting. But with the door open, whoever goes to buy it can actually see that there's shelves in the inside. This cute little red chair was aging on my porch for a long time. It's perfect for my shop and it's one of those things that I was redoing what I had on my porch, so I brought it in here. I also love to have like aged galvanized. We've got a video on how to use toilet bowl cleaner. So anytime I'm at the thrift store and I find galvanized, whether it's aged or not, I always scoop it up and I take it home. I usually give it like a sand or rub down with some steel wool, put some toilet bowl cleaner on it. It gives it a great aged effect. It usually sells really well. Chippy salvage is always a big seller. It also doesn't take up a lot of space, so if it sits around a while, that's fine. It gives a great look and patina to my room. I really want to evoke a feeling when people come in. It's farmhouse, there's flowers, there's like a color scheme going on, and when people come in, they can definitely see my design point of view, and Chippy Salvage always helps with that. If you guys watch my videos, then you've seen the blended finish on this cute little buffet turned bench. I love it because it's a great place to put a few items on. I think it might be a minute before it sells just because it's kind of lower to the ground so people don't notice it. But on top of it, I've got pillows, I've got this basket that I thrifted. This basket was actually painted exactly the way that it is. And then I've got this beautiful carnival glass dish. I just picked this up last week and I staged it on top of a mirror because the prettiest part is underneath all the fruit. So on the mirror, when people walk by, they can see all the beautiful fruit that's on that glass. And then I've got a collection of mugs that I thrifted the other day. I don't know if they're gonna sell till Christmas because they're like a red and white pattern. They're super cute, very farmhouse. They're from England. 
and I absolutely love them. So we always have a crock full of rolling pins, some that Zeb's handmade, and then some that I picked up. If I pick them up and they've got just boring ends, I always paint the ends with the all natural paints that I carry because they sell quickly. I love wooden bowls, very farmhouse. I usually will paint or stain the outside. And then we've got all of our cutting boards. So this is kind of the kitchen area. You can pick up a bowl, a rolling pin, a cutting board. It kind of makes sense together. It's all on top of an old door coffee table that I think now that we've moved it to this area will probably sell quickly. It's super duper cute. This cute little cabinet I picked up when I was in California. Debbie from Debbie's Design Diary and I painted it live. It's got an amazing layered finish that I achieved using multiple DIY paints and a squeegee. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out because it really looks legit old. It's super cute and I paired it with some anthropology knobs I picked up probably six months ago on sale. They're like the perfect pair together. On top of it, I just have a few odds and ends. I've got my dollar store hack. I love tarnished silver. In fact, this is my last, this is my last tarnished silver piece, so I've got to go pick up more. It sells really, really well. It adds a nice metallic touch to your farmhouse decor with a little bit of glam and people love it. Also, anything enamel wear is amazing. Super farmhouse, super cute. I picked up this little teapot this last week. It was already in those colors. So all I had to do is clean it up and it's ready for a new home. This is a tiered shelf I picked up used on Marketplace. It's not very cute and someday I would love to refinish it and make it look a little bit more farmhouse. But for now it holds books, corbels, candlesticks, odds and ends that I don't really have a place for. And the nice thing is that it's not for sale so I can put lots of stuff on there and I don't have to reorganize it when the piece sells. So all the signs that we make, we bring to the shop. Some of them I keep, but most of them come here. I love to have a variety of them, even though I'm not necessarily a sign maker, they really add a hominess to the space and they're actually really great sellers. And there's always dead wall space. You never you know, wanna walk into a space and have nothing on the walls. So I suggest signs, baskets, and shelves are great things for your walls. If you've got hanging space, that's always a good place to add more items for sale. I don't like to put anything heavy. One, because I don't want it to fall on somebody's head. And two, because visually it's just too much. So these open skeleton lampshades and these baskets are perfect for up here. Visually, they're not super heavy. And I went ahead and did the skeleton lampshades in the middle because you can see through them and they just add a little bit of interest that draws your eye up. So this cute little area over here has two nightstands. We put those bun feet on. They literally sold within minutes after they hit the store. They're just waiting to be picked up. And then I've got another little grouping over here, some candlesticks. They're not all matching, but those are all pewter. And then I've got some metallics over here, some signs, an old drawer that I just put a shelf down the middle. I had two, but one sold. If you have an old drawer and it's super chippy and cute, think about lining it and making something that somebody can hang and display in. So we painted these chairs on a live. Here's the problem with chairs. They sell quickly, so I know that as soon as they hit the shop, I'm gonna have something else that needs to come in because everybody needs a place to sit. I love this bird fabric. It's from Hobby Lobby, and I swear to you, anything I put that on sells. So whether you're selling stuff or just decorating your home, this fabric is a really good go-to. It has lots of great colors you can pull from whether blue or green or yellow or even the grays and the creams. It's just a really great farmhouse fabric. Proof positive that we don't paint everything. This was a primitive cabinet that I found. All I did was give it a good scrubbing and I'm leaving it exactly the way it is. It gives a little bit of a rest from the painted furniture and that's also the reason why I don't paint all of my baskets because I feel like the natural wood baskets also do the same thing. They just give you a rest from the painted furniture. I always have at least one basket with flowers in it so people can get an idea of what they can do with the basket. Obviously when it's got florals in it, it's gonna cost more money. So they sometimes will see the idea of what I've got. They pick up a basket that doesn't have flowers, that's a little less expensive, and then they go home and make it their own. Every now and then I will sell fully arranged flower baskets and then I just have to bring more in. So one of my favorite spots in the shop is actually all of my paint. It's actually a little sparse right now because we had a really great week last week and I'll be restocking in the morning when we open. People come to buy furniture and some people come because they want to get inspired to create something because they've seen something you've done and they want to do it themselves. I know a lot of people that go to junk stores and they don't go there to buy, they just go there to look. So if you've got a space and you can carry a brand that you use on a regular basis, it makes a lot of sense because people can see what it looks like on the furniture and then they want to buy to make their furniture look the same. 
So I've got this great cabinet. It's got tons of space. I've got my DIY paint, my fairy chalk mother, my a few IOD transfers. I'm actually going to be bringing in a lot more DIY IOD products here in the next few months because people love it. Paint brushes, in fact, <laughs> good thing I checked. I um, normally have that fully stocked. I'm out of my big brushes and my wax brushes. So anyway, just a good tip. If you've got a space, if you can carry a line of paint that you love to use, definitely a good idea. I hope this gives you a better idea of all the smalls that we're painting, what we're actually doing with them. This space makes me really happy. And that's one of the most important things. Your space doesn't need to look exactly like my space or anybody else's, but it should reflect your design point of view and be a design aesthetic that you really love. Because chances are, if you love it, somebody else will too. If you have any friends that are furniture flippers, have booth space or sell at markets, please share this video with them. I would love to be able to give my ideas to other people and help them out. Comment below with any design questions or questions about your booth space. Don't forget to hit that notifications button. We have some fun collabs coming up. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.